everybody, how's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know what it is. This is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. But today, MSOTD rocks or rock and metal thrive. Happy Thursday, everybody. It is January 7th. Yes, we are already one week into 2021. And hopefully, this is already going to be better than 2020 because I don't even know anymore. But we've got a great, great episode coming up for you today. Coming out from a band in Central Missouri. And remember when we did the whole entire thing with GFM trying to feature them on Octane? Yeah, we're going to do the same thing with this one. So please help us along in welcoming Russ, Tyler, and Adam from the band Etched in Embers to the Core Progression Podcast. Are you guys ready? Because, well, I am. Let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast. Yes, you've seen a good number of bands that a good person, a great guy has helped promote. His name is Joe Alfano, and you've seen him on the podcast with King Collapse, Another Day Dawns, As Strange as Angels. And guess what? We got another one, and they kick some ass. So please welcome from Central Missouri, the guys from Etched in Embers. So guys, welcome to Core Progression Podcast. Yeah, what's going on, man? So. It's going good over here right now, you know, just um, cold. That's the best way to describe it, just cold. We were chatting about that, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 we were, and, well, that's just what happens, you know, in winter, you know, your blood gets thicker. Um, You start running outside in shorts and when it's, like, 30 degrees outside because you think it's finally warm again, you know, the huge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It's a little different down here. Yeah, I, I yeah, it's just kind of, you know, just what happened. But I know you guys get – Missouri does get cold at times where, you know – it could happen where you just end up getting like those like negative like fifteen degree days maybe every once in a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. They don't they don't stay away from us for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They're, it's they're, not so bad when there's snow on the ground. I mean, I, yeah, I that makes it a lot much. better. But uh, a lot of times there's not. No. <laughs> just icy when you go to work. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Just and enough to gone. just enough to wreck your car. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm well it. I'm well aware of that. I've uh, yeah. I think I figured you grew up there. <laughs> I have had one incident of trying to get off the freeway at one time at like 1.30 in the morning in January, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, my car is starting to go sideways. Oh, shoot. Can I hold this drift? Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Boom. Man. Yeah. Oh, well, it happens. I'm still here. It, that might that might be a very good determination of why I like mosh pits so much, because when I crashed that car, I felt, it said it felt like bumper cars, so... <laughs> <laughs> must have knocked something loose in my brain to the point where all of a sudden every concert I go to now if there's a mosh pit I'm just like yes 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 <laughs> now do you drive a car or a truck up in, in that area I mean do you need a truck or do you just car um you well because I because I live in Milwaukee so it's I don't like oh, if yeah. I, I don't need a truck um I drive a 06 Subaru so I still have the I still have the four-wheel drive which is nice but it's the engine sounds like a go kart every time I turn it on. It's like WRX. Um, it's a no. It's not a WRX. It's a uh, what is it? Subaru Legacy. Legacy. Oh, they, they, they I've nice any of those in rally games. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> on video games, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a nice little four door sedan that you know, it does what it needs to do. It get if it doesn't get stuck in the snow at all because well, got that nice four wheel drive going. So yeah. Yeah, that's always nice. But before we really jump into it, there's always one thing I like to do is just really let you guys introduce yourselves to the audience. So I'm going to ask you guys to do three things. Go around the room where there's three of you guys right now. I want you to give me the two easy parts, your name, what you do in the band. But the third part's always my favorite. And I want to hear, we're going to go like all like intro into high school, like college welcome week stuff. I want to know a little fun fact about you guys, but I want it to be the wackiest thing you can think of. It can be a wacky fact, wacky story. Um, usually my favorite that I usually get some people to do is give me their Tinder bios. That's always a hilarious one, but if you don't have it, don't worry. So I'll let you guys take it away, whoever wants to start. Wow. <laughs> it always happens every time. Let her out there, brother. <laughs> Third thing. I, I give us some time. I have no idea about that. Third <laughs> exactly. Part. We're not going to listen. Uh, you yeah. just talk. Well, <laughs> my name is Adam Sutter. Um, I uh, play bass and I do backing vocals in the band. And, uh, man, I don't know. My whole life is just a wacky story. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I have no idea, dude. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I'm sure we could might maybe share some. Well, I mean, just, just, just from just from the times we've been together uh, on some of the 
on some of um well this goes way back that had to be around us well i know but i mean <laughs> I'm saying, i mean some of the last times that we've uh been together um because we've been, we're, we're pretty uh recent you know band we haven't been playing together that long and really you know and all that and uh some of the times we've had going up to the studio and recording uh we've just had some wild times uh you know people coming out of driving around uh you know uh springfield and like in the middle of the night and guys in skull masks were just coming up to the truck and just scaring the crap out of us for just no apparent reason or just like oh, it seemed like every time we were coming up there we'd just be hanging out and just people would just be random people just be trying to come into the place we're in and and we're just trying to record just, music and man. the whole time we're just the whole time we're just cracking up laughing and just it's it's wild so wait wait, wait. I, are these just like random people that are doing this are these people that you might actually know no, 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 it's no, been no, it's no. been like so much strange stuff has happened to us <laughs> since in our in our short time playing together. It, like, yeah, just random people just coming out of nowhere. Just almost every time we get we get together, something something wild happens. We had a pretty wild Halloween show with a couple other bands down here um, from Central Missouri. Uh, Sky falls down and Casa Desire. Uh, we played up in Jeff City with them um, with Casa Desire the night before Halloween and got pretty wild um so man i don't know it's just there's just so many wacky times it's just hard i can barely keep them all straight <laughs> so, uh, that's all i got hey hey i mean that's that sounds good i mean there's the wacky fact that you know the the evil teenagers from the karate kid dressed as skeletons coming and scaring you guys in the studio dude straight up like just coming out of nowhere on the street at us while we're driving down a road you know and like this was before covid so there wasn't any masks or anything. He just had a mask on. He just had a full yeah, Halloween mask on, you know, in the middle. You know, I don't know what time of the year it was. Total man. Yeah, but hey, man, it, he was pre- he was preparing for 2020. I'll tell you that. Dude, yeah, he he was yeah he knew something was coming. He knew something we didn't know, man. Our poor drummer Tony. I've never seen his eyes oh, big, any bigger because because he was sitting shotgun and the guy just comes at him, you know, lunges at the truck and he just turns around and his eyes are just like this big. I mean. So funny, dude. But it's awesome. It's like like a Looney Tunes cartoon, just like he Arr! does look like a Looney Tunes cartoon when he, when he yeah, they just he'll just throw like, them eyes out there on you, man. dude. It it's funny. Yes, <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. Oh yeah, we yeah, that was another thing. We went to a haunted house here, <laughs> Halloween or and uh, or a little before yeah, that, just before. just before and wow, uh, that was I think that was the first time I ever seen our drummer Tony actually like legit scared of something and some guy came out and uh, we were, we we're about done and we're outside and we're, we're going to the, like the little exit part. And this guy comes out with one of these little mini chainsaws and taps Tony on the back of the leg. And Tony's a pretty oh, big dude. guy, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and he, I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen him fully sprint in my life. He lowered his shoulder. He, yeah. He was running <laughs> like a track star, man. Screaming the whole nine. I was like, "What?" Wow, if there yeah. were kids, they would have been. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they... Bowling so, pins getting. Yeah, back up, yeah. Right? Thank God nobody else was hurt, but besides Tony, uh, I'll say whenever it comes to haunted houses, like the big Frady Cat guys are always the best because it's like they look so tough walking in there, and all of a sudden something comes out, scares them and help me hear them go, ah! and they just bolt. And yeah. it's like usually if I when I'm at a haunted house, I'm usually the guy that's just like trying to get the people that are working at the haunted house trying to scare me to break. I'm usually the guy yeah, that's trying yeah, to like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be- best one I ever did was was this was in 2019 and it was like this like haunted like they set up a haunted house at like a ski hill. So at one point they have the ski lift take you up to the top of the hill for the last part, which is like a freaking like circus tent carnival thing. But before okay. that, there is someone that's like nailed to like some weird looking cross type thing. And there is like some some guy with like a sight. There's like bow down to the dark lord, and everyone's looking at these people like, oh my god, oh, scary! And I just get down on my knees. I'm just like, hail Satan, hail Satan! <laughs> and I hear the person across say, I knew someone do it. You owe me twenty bucks. <laughs> I went up and high fived him, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's like if I can get that to happen, I'm usually pretty good with it. Oh yeah, I think we did that. I think we pretty much were just confused confused one of the one of them the we went in this like there was a pretty big group of us and we were all a little inebriated at this point in the evening well you and, sh- i mean uh, you have to be it's uh, a hot house and like walks you go in and it's like looks like it's like some kind of like old forge or something and it's like it looks like it's a dead end but there's gonna be a trap you know 
a big sliding door that comes up. But we didn't know that, right? And the guy's trying to do this, like, whole big spiel, you know, do his whole thing. But we're just so confused on what, where we're supposed to go, you know. <laughs> so we're all just yelling over, where are we supposed to go? I don't know what's going on. Where are we supposed to go? And finally just was like, okay, screw it. Just open up the door. He's like, come on, just get, go, get in through here. Like, geez, you're ruining my whole act right now, guys. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That is, that is how you do a haunted house, right? <laughs> yeah. You watch, you watch the big guys get scared, and then you try and throw everybody else off their game. That's the way to do it. We were definitely doing that for sure. <laughs> well, alrighty. Well, after that, I wonder if you guys can uh, top that. So we'll see what you guys got. Uh, all right. I guess I'll go. I'll give Tyler a little more time to think here. Uh, my name's Russ. I'm guitar and vocals in the band. Um, I think that was the first or second question, right? My name and yep. what I do, right? That's what I thought. Yep. The easy uh, questions. I'm going to give a couple scenarios, some that don't, that don't include necessarily these guys, which not that that wasn't great, but music related, probably the strangest and weirdest thing that ever happened to me one time is uh, a band I was in, we're, we're in the middle of a show, and we come off of a, uh, and it was a, uh, I think a two hour slot, it was, it was early in my years, and it was a cover slot, and we go to find our bass, go to our bass player, and he's gone, he just disappeared, and we just can't you you're like you're like okay he's left-handed plays a, a a left-handed bass so just seeing our band adapt in that amount of time to just losing a member yeah. you know, it was probably <laughs> the, the craziest time I've ever had on stage it was like okay we finished out the night with uh, uh just uh, kind of getting by so but i tell you that one of the things that, the craziest things that happened to me that i'm gonna get on record so if i ever have any long-term effects is i was walking into walmart the other day i told these guys oh, yeah. I had rehearsal the other night I was walking into Walmart the other day and them damn gallon jugs of hand sanitizer they have, right? Walking by innocent bystander, some lady's over here and it's stuck and she kind of hammers it down. I'm probably a good 10 feet away. That shit comes across there, shoots me all the way across, right into my eyeballs. Oh. I mean, <laughs> going Yikes. in to get some like groceries, one in a man. Million. One in a million going to get shots. some groceries. Did you fall? I, I mean, I went down to my knees. I'm like blinded by this shit, man. It's like, what in the hell? I, I believe a certain industry calls that the money shot. I That's guess what I was going to say. It was like a one in a million money shot. I, sh- I certainly felt life. dirty after that. I felt dirty. And, yeah. And, and, so you think you're supposed to feel clean after that. <laughs> Winter, I kind of never drunk. feel again. <laughs> I get so, <laughs> so cleansed from the inside out. It, 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 I can, you know, it's that. Stuff they make, it's like straight alcohol. They mix up yeah. or whatever it smells like. Just took shot ever clear. So yeah. that goes right in my eyeballs. I go down and the lady's like, oh, my God. Some old, <laughs> I just like, killed this man. I waved it off. I waved it off and got back to my to my feet again. It did continue shopping, but I, I just, I think back, and I guess I could have been rich. Yeah. <laughs> From that experience. Uh, you could, yeah, you could have, you could have, like, sued if it was, like, um. It was like Purell's hand sanitizer. You could have gone after them. It's like, with yeah. def- you guys have a defective pump or all of a sudden you could have gone after Walmart. It's like, wait, I got injured in your store. I, I deserve compensation here. Well, damn, I, you know what? This this goes way back here. When I was uh, probably 19 years old, I had a water bed. I guess there's a thing here with my eyes. Somebody's trying to blind me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because one of those water bed conditioner things that uh, – um, you pour into like it's almost like a bleach, I guess, to keep the water clean in the in the water bed. I don't maybe none of you've heard of water beds. I don't know. I don't no, I'm I'm actually well aware of water beds. My cousin had one when back in like nine like the late nineties. She had a water Are they bed. frozen beds up there? I mean you're like <laughs> sleeping on the thing of ice. Or um after I mean after I think that one actually did get frozen. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> Well, I dropped one of those bottles. Safety kit, the whole thing was on, cap screwed and everything. I dropped that bottle just about two, three foot as I'm bending over to put it in there. And the top blows off and splashes me in the eyeballs. Oh, I mean, this is very, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking there might be yeah, this, is here, this is why I can't see anymore. Uh, but there just uh, happened to be an ambulance at a funeral home across the street at a funeral. Or there, there was a, a, a paramedic group and we got their attention. They come over there and I, I'd waved them off and ended up and going to the hospital and they had to put suction cups like on my eyeballs. With with a fluid flowing through it to rinse that for two 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 gallons of that had to go through there. Worst time of my life. Oh, no, that sounds terrible. Yeah. All right, man. I'm gonna go cry now. That's... <laughs> oh yikes. Okay, crazy. Yeah, that was definitely uh. That that that, 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 that led into some crazy shit. I'm having some. <laughs> 
some flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. PTSD. So Ty- Tyler's up then, I guess. <laughs> All right, Ty, let's see if you can beat any of these. Let's go. Uh what was it? Is it a wacky fact or is it like a crazy story? I mean, it can be any, either or. All right. Well, I'm Tyler Kenyon. Uh, I play lead guitar and, and do some backing vocals. And uh, uh, I have a tendency to uh, get really drunk and uh, phone calls fight, during interviews. I didn't have an so. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What, wait, what was that? I didn't pick that up. Uh, I get really drunk and I fight inanimate objects. And, and <laughs> like myself and become an idiot. <laughs> So do you fight like the wacky waving inflatable arm playing tube men at car dealerships? I wish I wish it was that good. It's, it's like really stupid stuff, like the side of my car or like a bar stool. It's something that even makes sense, you know. I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like at least that's a person, you know. Kind of yeah, it's like, like it's like you bump into a bar, so it's like, what'd you say to me? But yeah, you want, it's you want pretty to much like that. It's pretty much exactly like that. <laughs> I guess that's a safe way not to get beat up. I mean, yeah, you know, no, like, yeah. Because I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, they're not. It's not going to return fire. I mean, a wacky wave and flame arm flame two men. You know, he might hit you with his head, might hit you with his hands. It's not going to hurt very much, but he's going to fight back somehow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just going to have to get him one as far with. <laughs> <laughs> I just there take you go, it, Junior. I'll put it on top of my car. Give him hell, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, like you guys are gonna have, I feel like after that, you guys are going to have to buy one and put it up like on stage with you guys while you're playing, just so at some point during the show, Tyler can put down his guitar and just try and fight it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, in, I'm into that. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's, that's a quality. That'll uh, be the most he moves the whole show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just damn, messing with this. Shots fired, dude. Shots fired. God damn it. I'm going to have to. Doing this podcast, guys, I have to get some marshmallows out here. I mean, you guys just roasted it right now. Like, I should, you know, I could get some golden brown ones, you know, you know, get some little chocolate, some graham crackers, make some s'mores, you know, we'll be good. Well, the only reason Tyler hesitates to move is because he just writes such badass shit, man. He's got to sit there glued to the pedal board and play that shit. So he pulls the call off live. What you hear, he pulls off. He's got he's got to go on all that like Mick Mars kind of stuff where it's like he's not going to move very much because he's well Mick Mars can't move very much but like kind of in the same t- <laughs> sense with Tyler it's like he's not he's not moving very much because he's so concentrated in what he's doing he doesn't want to mess up he's in the zone he's just like don't mess with me I am in the zone oh, yeah. and later I will fight a bar stool <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, I, I mean it might have like that well then um if you guys ever show up to get all my whole uh, good old hometown of Milwaukee uh Tyler please don't try and fight a bar stool because um I don't know those bar stools might actually fight back. Is there some they kind might. of one of those weird laws that like just that's like a felony? Yeah, you know, like where, <laughs> like you can't walk in some and shoot bubble gum in some counties or state or yeah. areas of state, and, or I you mean, know, walk a horse I'm, down the street or something. I mean, I don't think it's a law to leave. Like, I don't think it's a law that you have to finish your drink, but I'm pretty sure it's very frowned upon in in, in society here in Milwaukee because if you don't fin- if you have a beer, you don't finish it. It's like, dude, what are you doing out here? Well, Should you be allowed think, back I in? That's just a Faux pas all the way around. Uh, yeah, I think that should that's probably a be a federal law. That's a worldwide, uh, worldwide law. It's yes. it's it, the only way you sh- if, if you have to leave your drink. The only way you're leaving your drink is because you cannot physically be conscious enough to finish it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's like okay, we understand. You should still pour it down their throat. Just so they're not <laughs> yeah, yeah, them. just so they're not wasting it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's when teamwork comes into play. <laughs> teamwork sure makes the dream work, work, baby. Sure we... There it is. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Then I guess definitely wearing the brewer shirt on the podcast today really made sense. Wow. It was like some weird foresight right there. Dun, dun, dun. I'm surprised we don't see more people with like a zip off bag at the bars, you know, when they're done with it. They got their alcohol. They can't finish it. It's close time pouring that and they're zipping that up. Yeah, zipping it up. <laughs> Russ, you're onto something here. You are really onto something here. Okay, that- Shark Tank, here I come. Yeah, shark what- Tank. Take well, home baggies for your I'm- alcohol. Yeah, I'm going to start thinking about this. Well, once, you know, everything with COVID starts calming down again, once because now the vaccine is being rolled out, if that ends up working out the way it's supposed to work out and, you know, everything gets back to the way it's supposed to be with live shows and people going out having a good time all the time, not having to worry about this, hopefully by the summer of 2021, then all of a sudden if I'm starting to go out to the bars and I'm out there, it's like, okay, you know, I'm getting me like some kind of something with tequila in there because I didn't feel like having beer that day or a gin and tonic because also I wanted to see what it was going to be like to just drink gin all day and see if I was going to be the angry gin guy or the guy that just laughs at everything and thinks it's hilarious, which for me is always the latter. But it's like, okay, if I can't finish it, I'm just going to start pulling out Ziploc bag. It's like, what's this? 
finishing this tomorrow. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Can I get some ice in here? <laughs> Booze lock. Booze lock. There you Booze go, lock. man. Oh. Booze lock. Sorry. All right. All right, this definitely sounds like a Shark Tank idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> booze Lock, the official Booze Lock bag of Etchin yeah. Embers. Let us get these. Let this, let, let let's get this trademark or, or copyright or whatever. I guess it'd be trademark file. Yeah, yeah. Before you air spot. this episode. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, because somebody's gonna be t- jotting this down. Like, ha-ha, okay, I'll, I'll, booze lock. I'll, I'll take care of this right away, idiot. guys. I'll take care of this right away. Booze Lock, patent pending. Patent yeah, pending. Yeah. That's right. Patent pending. We'll start with that, but going into Etchin Embers a little bit more so as well, because you guys said you guys haven't been really playing together all that much because, well, of course, with the pandemic as well, but you guys recently formed even just before the pandemic started. Am I correct on that? Yes. In a sense, the band formed back uh, April, May of 2019 yeah. with, the, with in kind of a different lineup. Tyler was actually the original drummer of the band, um, and he and I played music together. We're all musicians from the area, local area. Um, I'm kind of a transplant, I guess. Maybe Adam's a transplant. I think everybody else may be from around the area. Yeah, but um, I'm from here. Yeah. All right. Oh, no, I That's how little we know you. I know See, which guys from. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but, uh, know. The uh, uh, so we, as we moved through the year, we kind of had some intentions. Uh, start out all original project, of course. Um, we we put together like eight ten tunes pretty quick. Uh, but as the year went on, we kind of wanted to see Tyler more in the 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 actual lead guitar role that he slays. So um, Adam plays with uh, Tony all the time. They're, they're, they're kind of the package deal from, uh, you know, from a couple of projects they'd had in the past. And uh, we'd all seen each other around the area before. Yeah, we all knew each other. Uh, yeah, we knew each other, just never all in the same project. Uh, kind of cross paths in different ways. But November of last year, we sat down and talked at, at a dinner one night and decided that we were going to hit the studio in January and start tracking what what the early sets were for Edged and Embers. And then we had added a couple over the last uh, few months, but uh, hit the studio in January without ever having planned a show together. Yep. Yep. And then had our single release show in February for our, our first single, our debut single, Spoken, um, which is out there on all the streaming uh, services and such. YouTube um, and track tenured, there, we got seven tunes tracked in uh, uh, through the pandemic, I guess I should say. Uh, early on before we beat it with a couple of tunes and then we worked remotely on a couple other tunes. Um, but it definitely slowed us down because we hadn't expected the full release to hit December, you know, uh, and that just didn't happen with everything. Well, we kind of pulled back and we'll get into a little bit about where we ended up going with a couple singles and, and where we're going from there. So, yeah, new band. Uh, we have a lot more shows under our belt now. We did manage to play a little bit through uh, when it when the, the lockdowns uh, let up a little back in September, I think. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, and we had managed to get one show in over the summer or right before, the, I guess, March 6th, our last show leading up to um, late September. Yeah, at the Rift in Springfield. Um, but, you know, so we're about eight shows in now as far as the band. Lots of rehearsals, um, you know, we've got songs recorded and tracked and mixed and mastered that we haven't dropped yet. So that's good. we got some content that's going to be coming out real quick and getting back in the studio here um, right after the first year too. Yeah, we've got a, a good slate of new tunes that we're working up right now. I'm trying to get back in the studio here as soon as we can um, and hopefully get a follow-up to uh, Sale of Silence. I think we'll be promoting recently. Yeah. Um, so Around February, get, I yeah. think, is when you'll hear new music. That's what we're hoping. So we'll just have to see what the future has in store, but that's what we're going to try. That's our tentative plan, you know? Yeah. And I always have to say tentative plan because especially with what's happened in 2020, everyone has to say tentative plan because you never know what the hell is going to happen anymore. Cause exactly. everyone, everyone had certain plans for 2020. Everyone as of like late February had this whole entire idea of what their year was going to look like, at least up until like June or July at that point. In terms of, especially for musicians, like what they might be releasing, what concerts they might be playing, what shows they might be playing. And all of a sudden, once the pandemic hit, everything shut down. All of a sudden, everyone had to go into a basically kind of like a growth mindset mode instead of like saying, okay, this is what was supposed to happen. Instead of just focusing on what was supposed to happen, you had to look and say, okay, this is what happened. This sucks, but how can we use this time to best our situation? Because if we focus in on what was going to be for 2020 and focus on that, we're not going to get anywhere. 
because I know there's because there's a good amount of bands and I think there's a good amount of like the really big bands that are out there that thought, oh, you know, this ain't going to last too long because they really didn't do all that much. And then all of a sudden you're starting to see all these other bands that were upcoming, emerging that are, you know, just starting to get starting to gain some traction really start to blow up because they took that opportunity and just ran with it. The, the bands that have been grinding during all this are going to reap some rewards from it for sure. Yeah, I think that uh, content creation has really um, some bands have nailed it. Um, a lot of bands were hesitant because uh, ourselves included. Um, we, we weren't sure how long things are going to hang on the way they are now or, or early on when it was really tight and may become tight again. Yeah. Um, there was a stage and I mean, hell, I've had multiple stages. Which I'm sure everybody out here has uh, depression. God, man, real thing during this. Um, we came off of the first two singles and a sold out single release show February 29th played one show after that the following week. And, uh, then man, it's like, okay. Um, we did track a song. So tell us silence was originally tracked. The actual, um, you know, the, the, the rough tracks were not the demo, but the actual tracks you hear on the radio were recorded early March. Um, right. And we, we had some things we wanted to fix on them. So we didn't, uh, you know, push to get a mix or a master of it. Uh, we sat on it for a while, which ended up being kind of a blessing in disguise because then we were able to get a, a new look at it and step back from it a little bit and see it in a new light. Um, but my God, we, we, we were looking at maybe not being productive through the entire summer. And we managed to record a, a shoot a video, uh, record a track in May in one day, no less. Uh, recorded the song crown eight hours 10 hours we recorded the entire song crown um and shot the video the very next weekend um it, it was a crazy process yeah, but we managed to pull it off really cool uh, really cool experience though yeah yeah um, uh yeah we felt like we were breaking the law maybe doing it there weren't no <laughs> there weren't no lockdowns here but it's just that the court of public opinion roast you for just trying to do something that you love to do um but we managed to get the right people in there and, and, and make a cool video. So, it, but then, then again, right after that, we didn't see each other for almost two months because uh, our drummer thought, you know, he had a, maybe a, a COVID contact, ended up not being that tick born illness. If you, you know, up north, you probably don't have to worry about ticks, I wouldn't think. But uh, down here, ticks will get you. And little some yeah, bitches, they, they're, they're, they're nasty. They're nasty. They don't screw around. They'll get you sicker and shit. But so, so we've all kind of been dealing with our bouts of random illness and and stuff like that through all this and um and taking precautions and having loved ones fall ill uh and stuff like that so i mean it's it's been a really weird kind of journey for us so far because it's it we started in a kind of like the worst time we could ever start and it's affected <laughs> us but at the same time i feel like it's actually helped us in a lot of ways starting in this point i think it's helped us gain traction because it almost levels the playing field a little bit um just because you know you're you're able to get your voice heard more um and uh so i think you know i think that's able it's, that's been able to get us uh hooked into some of these avenues that we've been able to hook into to really promote sale the silence and get it on you know get it on some of these big platforms and big stuff and and get it remixed by some of these you know really yeah, awesome yeah. people um so so i mean yeah so it's kind of it's definitely a double-edged sword when you really look at it yeah. but i mean really in the the grand scheme of things I, it's it's been a wild ride and i think uh we got a we i think it's going to be really productive here in the long run though hopefully yeah. you know lord willing and <laughs> you know <laughs> there are there are no out there. There. i mean there's no meteors <laughs> are hitting our way or anything right yeah, so, yeah. As long as long as the, as long as the world doesn't explode in a fiery ball inferno, we'll maybe somebody okay. really is coming after me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it sure seems we seem to be taking the hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not just music taking the hit. The whole entire entertainment industry as well, because I've like my I only have one brother. He works at a he manages a bar on the University of Wisconsin's campus, and it's just. Let's just, let's just say they're not getting much help right now either. So oh, it's okay. like there, there's definitely other industries along with the music industry that is feeling the pain of this like crazy. However, what you were saying, though, what talking about, you know, this might be the worst time to start a band, but also the best time as well, because you're basically you're starting from zero starting at this time. However, once the pandemic hit, everyone else was basically going from zero as well because no one knew what the hell was going on. So you, so there's there were a lot of bands that were kind of at first 
really sitting back, sitting on their hands because they had all these plans for 2020. They were trying to figure out how to make sure that these plans could still go into place. But then you had other bands out there that decided, okay, we're going to start and we're going to use this time. Even Who knows how long it's going to last, but let's use this time with what we have and not worry about the what's going on the next couple of months. Let's figure out what we can do right now. And a couple of great examples of that are Trivium with Matt Heafy going on Twitch and just going crazy on that. I can use Falling in Reverse with Ronnie Radke as well. One of my biggest proponents of this is From Ashes to New because they started doing their covers on like right at the beginning. And all of a sudden they came out with their single Panic a month after and they reworked the whole entire video to fit in with the beginning of the pandemic. And it just worked out perfectly. So kind of that kind of mindset. And now From Ashes to New, like they, they went from a band that I had no idea even existed at the beginning of the year to a band where I'm like, I really want to see oh, these guys play live to a point to not only that, but they were going to be opening up on a tour with fire from the gods, bad wolves and Hollywood undead in 2020. But now looking if like once the stuff comes back in 2021, they could be the headliners on their own easily. Right. So, it's, right. I, so caught it's, him, I caught them two years ago with the hell. Yeah. Uh, with they were on tour, they were on tour with hell. Yeah. I was like, Oh man, these guys are awesome. Little five songs set to open the show. Yeah. It was cool. That's how I got turned on to them. So you're talking about people dropping music, bring me the horizon. Oh man, God, how many man. albums they write over this? <laughs> Golly, just man, just that, that just crazy. that one EP. I mean, because I did a whole entire like year end list. It's like, okay, what's the best album of the year? And I was like, I was set on one of them, and all of a sudden, a Trivium dropped their that EP, and I was just like, how in the actual hell is this a thing? Like, just <laughs> it, everything is so different, but it's all perfectly bring me the horizon at the same time. So I'm like. They they went from something that I really didn't care for with Amo, and then what they did at the end of 2019 with their songs to, I just say I just called it whatever songs yada 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 songs you get high to and just whatever just forget about what the hell's going on. But they come out with their post human survival horror EP. I'm just like, you guys went from that to, I'm done. Like that that like you guys just went from like I really don't know what the hell you guys are doing to you guys just nailed it every step of the way. So right, it's like right. so yeah. so just, just like having fun. Guy, it sounds like man, just making what they want to make. Exactly. And it's just that kind of mentality where it's just, you're going to be doing what you want to do, but also knowing what to do so that you're going to be putting out, like basically you're going to be growing during this time is kind of the most important thing as well. And there's a lot of bands that I'm not going to lie. It's it's looking at what they've done online, social media kind of stuff, because that's the way you're going to connect in the pandemic because everyone's kind of, you know, no, no one's traveling. No, there's no live shows. No one's really connecting in any other way, except online with people from a distance. So looking at how pe- how different bands are connected with people online, it all depends upon how you can stand out with that. And there's a lot of bands that haven't really done much of that. And I think a big reason for that is because they were hoping that 2020 was going to turn around. Their, their, their original plans were going to come into fruition, but that never happened. So a lot of the emerging bands that were smaller took that opportunity and said, hey, the, le- the, the playing field is now level because we're all in the same spot. And how can we best ourselves so that we are in the public eye we are in the conversation and we are in the minds of the fans and you're seeing bands like have that happen to them i mean i we were talking about it right before we started shooting take a look at bands like king collapse because they were on their song uprise was number one on octane for two straight weeks we talked about with um any given sin with their song and it's being on big guns for 15 straight weeks and ending at number one before they retired it and then what happened with saul as well uh, and it's just like stuff like that. Those bands would never have had the opportunity in my mind had it not been for the pandemic and had it not been for people discovering their sound through all these different avenues, through all these different networks. And also, as I have to say, it, how I found out about Salt and Any Given Sin and a bunch of these other bands was the same way I found out about you guys as well. So you're in that network, which makes right. a lot of sense to the point where you're seeing the growth start to happen. Oh, yeah. We, we certainly uh, know that we were in a position... The, the door we squeaked through, you know, I, I do uh, contribute a lot of that to the pandemic and the downturn in live shows and and, and releases and things like that. Right. Bands that had albums that were ready to go in spring, they held on to them till fall because they just didn't know what you know, they, they knew they wanted to get out there and sort of sport it, get that merch sales and things. But, you know, I, really middle of summer, I sent out unsolicited emails with a couple of the tracks to places and that's you know and really even back earlier on when the first single dropped um, but hit it real heavy in in the in the summer and that's that's how we got heard was just getting in somebody's email on a slow day and they they called ashley crown was the first one that the, the promotion company we actually 
ended up working with was the first one they heard. And when we got uh, uh, got into you know kind of looking at the whole package, Stella Silence was the, the single that, that they felt the strongest. Um, but really, preemptively, I had been a fan of Saul, been a fan of Any Given Sin, knew who they had worked with, and was also coming at that from a different angle. And it just was weird because the point on contact or point of contact we made out on the East Coast um, had the same point of contact I was trying to make in the Midwest. Um, and boom, there it was. It was closing the gap or closing that circuit. Um, that's what led to Sell the Silence getting produced by Chris Dawson um, and, and mixed by him, uh, mastered by Mike Kalasian. They, it all just kind of went off without a hitch, more or less. We just got the stems from the studio we recorded them at, sent them out there, um, got a song back. That's kind of how it went down. We had a good song structure prior to that, but it, it just, it was seen in a little different light from a slow burn to kind of a more rocker, even though it's a mid-tempo rocker, it still, still had passed a little more of a punch than what we initially did it on the, on the, uh, on the day we tracked it and, and the follow-up mixes. But uh, yeah, so that, that definitely double-edged sword. We hate to see the downturn in the industry, but we might have benefited from it to, to some degree. So. Yeah, and I, I kind of feel the same way as well with the podcast as well, due to the fact that I don't think I would have been able to interview a lot of the bands that I did had it not been for the pandemic, but it was something where I had to take that opportunity as it came. I thought there's not these bands are not playing live shows. There's a bunch of them that are coming out with new releases. How are they going to be getting these new releases out there? And I'm a potential outlet for that as well, so let's go for it. And that kind of like how you got connected with your contact ice and then all of a sudden getting connected with Chris Dawson to uh, mix, uh, yeah, the sale of silence. I was like kind of, you know, starting to mess up my head right there. It's like, okay, I got to put one, two together. But Save what ended up happening? <laughs> But what ended up happening with me was I was like, I tried to get uh, James Clark from Kill the Lights on just on a whim. So I emailed their press contact and they sent me over to uh, Adam Splitter PR, which is who they work with. And all of a sudden it's like their their guy over there helped me set something up with him. I'm like, okay, then all of a sudden next thing I know, I have a contact with Adam Splitter PR and they've sent me like six, seven or eight bands already that I've been able to interview and I've enjoyed every single one of them. And just through something like that, and I looked at like the list for Adam Splitter, I'm like, holy crap, this list is huge huge and just like all the bands around there, like okay i definitely got something here but it's like i probably wouldn't have had that chance had not been for the pandemic because when i got to actually interview james it was two weeks after uh kill the lights came out their debut album so i'm like oh shit thinking about this it's just taking the time during the pandemic to just say instead of saying okay instead of what this is what 2020 should have been saying this is what 2020 is and this is what we're going to do about it kind of taking that mentality and really maximizing on that that's where that's I make a lot of connections with bands off of that as well because that same mentality really speaks volumes. You got to work with what you have, man. I tell you, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, uh, yeah. you can either close up shop and go home. Um, and which unfortunately, I guess that's not that might be a bad term because a lot of people have closed up shop and went home, unfortunately. Country, but, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, hell's not, not like we make any money in music so i mean we're just yeah it's yeah. passion so that passion driving that uh, uh you know it's it's been a intimidating thing for bands to take on some bands are in a better position to do quality live streams than than others um you know we we shied away from it early on because we just couldn't get together um our, tony our drummer who you know we didn't mention him in the in the introduction i uh, couldn't be here uh, Tony McKee, we, we love him a lot. He is the engine behind the band for sure, and probably the most grown up out of all of us. He's definitely the most responsible. Just, my God, we need him. He saves yeah. us from a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's a good. But I mean, if we if we were here, we'd probably be talking about like, school and stuff, um, and doing doing right. But <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> not not fighting inanimate objects or anything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, it it was very intimidating. And when we didn't see each other for periods of time, and, and nobody wants to take the rain and say, well, I just want to hop on and do a show, you know, so maybe Tyler and I could have got together and played a song or two to do a live stream or Adam and I, but we wanted to include everybody. So I will say we haven't given up on that. Um, no. Live streams are, are probably in our very near future or very sure. near future. Um, we kind of kind of thought about how we would want to approach it. And we have the people, I think, to do it on, on a pro level by all means. Yeah, yeah um, but uh, we, we just didn't want to race to it and then sell ourselves short on the product we put out there. So we've got some, I mean, help. Chris just did the mixes for uh, uh, any given sin and Saul's live stream on Octane, the, the virtual accelerator tour there. That sounds yes. killer. 
stuff was killer. So it's uh, it's it's fun to watch as a as a fan of music. I mean, I, I listened to several today on um, I listened to Tetrarch today on Liquid Metal their live stream. That was killer. I mean, yeah, yeah it's it's good stuff, man. So. On my end, like as a, as a for mine as a fan though, I've been kind of struggling to get into those live streams basically because it's just though how it's it depends on how you at like basically are at a show. Where me, it's I'm at I'm at those shows and once those mosh pits get going, I mean I'm just gravitating towards them and it's something that is unlike any other feeling where it's it's this so organized chaos that I just feel like I'm at home in there. It's like a second home for me. Just even if though I'm getting like bounced around, you know almost break my nose one time, a couple of uh, big cuts on my face, you know, the huge, it happens. But it's feeling, just like, feeling of some music is, is part of it too. I mean, um, you don't get that, that, that thump in your chest watching on your phone you or on your, on phone, your TV. Right? I mean, yeah, you, you know, yeah. you'll never be able to recreate it, but at least through technology, we can at least try to, we can do the best we can. And, and you that's, know, I think, I think that's kind of kept the, the flame burning, you know, uh, for, for music with being able to do that. It definitely has kept, it definitely has kept the flame burning. It has definitely, have, definitely has kept people intrigued because there have been some live streams in my mind that have been just certain, just in my mind, just a little bit more impactful than others. One was, um, on St. Patrick's day, because this was right as everything was starting because dropkick Murphy's ended up doing one on St. Patrick's day. So, you know, get more Irish rock, Irish punk rock kind of style there it ended up working out just fine because you know, that's what people weren't sure what the heck was going on, but you're getting something brand new. So you kind of have a little bit of a sense of normalcy there. Then as time went on, there were some bands that started doing like their album live streams when they came out with stuff. Cause I know Trivium did that. And then some people are starting to get a little bit more creative with it. Like I know motionless and white got creative with theirs. Ice nine kills. They did a whole entire thing where they did a whole, they did like a stream of like a concert that they did last year. But in between each song, they had like some weird, like horror kind of story going on with all the band members. And that was live. So it was just kind of something going real back and forth where it's just these different ideas have worked. But in the end, it's would you rather have live streams or live shows? And everyone's going to go and say live shows. And the reason and I think and again, I think the biggest reason why a lot of people like people are showing up to these live streams, but you're not going to get that same crowd that you're going to get because yeah. That live feel, that live connection to the music just isn't there when it's through a screen. It's got to be in person. You got to be in the same room. Everyone's got to be feeling that exact same vibe. And it's just something that people miss because it's a community thing. It's a family thing when you're in that crowd. From a performer's perspective, too, I mean, you want that crowd in front of you. Um, it's, it's a lot different to sing to a wall or a couple cameras and lights than it yeah. is to sing to a, to a group crowd. of uh, you know people in front of you. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's, and you get, I guess you, you equate that to rehearsal. You try to rehearse as the show's going to be, you know, get your live set there ready, but, but you're never going to get that uh, feel until you're there and, and hear them, the, the crowd's uh, screaming for you. So, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I'm excited for um, all of the learning that the bands have done, though. I, I think over the next year, um, I was just talking to a good friend of mine tonight that is prepping an album release and the content buildup that they have ready. Um, you'll hear about them, I'm sure. They're they're uh, they're another Missouri band. I've been working on an album for for a year and a half or so, and kind of got really torn apart during this, or as far as the, the progress of all that. Um, but they're ready to send it, and they have. When he was telling me the content stream they've built up, they've not turned loose to everybody. I was like, I think people are gonna love it. So I'm excited. I think a lot of people are sitting on some stuff. I think a lot of people are sitting on some stuff as well because especially during this time, there's got to be a lot of those bands that really that weren't really doing much in terms of just like putting out a lot of content, especially what are you going to end up doing during this time? A lot of these bands, I'm assuming they're going to be writing. They're going to be working on songs, be working on new albums to come out. So once 2021 hits, especially more towards the middle of the year and hopefully live shows will return, all of a sudden you're just going to see this influx of new music come out because bands are able to tour and they're able to promote these albums on these tours as well. So it's going to be like every single release day, Every single Friday is going to be just a major release date from like July through middle of November. And did I lose them? Are you guys there? Yep. 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 You, fr- you were frozen, yeah, you froze, man. Yeah, we froze for like. Uh, yeah, we froze for like just a little bit. Oh well, it happens. It's happened before. No big deal. 
But basically where I was going with that is just like, there's a lot of bands that are going to be producing stuff. There's going to be huge release days. I'm assuming from like July through October, November in 2021, because everyone's going to have all this content ready to go. And then once live concerts turn again, hopefully, you know, beginning of the summer, there's going to be just an influx of these. So, and with having that kind of concert stream that your uh, that the other band from Missouri has, like that's a great thing that they have going because then they're able to just continue to work to have that moment where they're going to end up standing out in the crowd when stuff comes like that comes back. Now, my question to you guys is, with an assumption that stuff's coming back in 2021, with what you guys have done during the pandemic, to make sure that you guys are we're on that level playing field, everybody, and make sure that you guys started to stand out amongst the crowd. What's the plan to make sure you continue to stand out amongst the crowd once stuff starts coming back? Dropping some good music. Yeah, I hope. Stay productive. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we, we have a ton of tunes. Um, you know, I had built up a backlog of them, and these guys have been, been kind enough to kind of go through them and, and see what they liked and, and uh, tossing out stuff as we're writing new stuff. So we've always got something to play up back and forth um, kind of keep the, the creativeness flowing. Um, like I said, the, the, the next single – unless we try to pop one off here real quick, we'll be February. Um, and we're expecting, we, we, I'm hoping we have a, a full on meeting about this, about the timing of the full length debut. Um, it was brought back up. We kind of backtracked a little bit from that because of all that happened. And then moving on to working with Chris um, earlier from tracking all the tunes uh, at, Re at Reach Audio with Kevin Gates. Um, we want to have a cohesive package. So we thought about maybe, sending the or just keeping the early tracks as an ep or just as single releases and then taking the newest music and releasing maybe a target time of october to december of 2021 um, as opposed to december of 2020 what we were originally hoping um, that still keeps the content flowing maybe dropping another three to four singles before then and then that way we'll have about five new ones that people <laughs> haven't heard that package with the cd um so that's up in the air obviously my immediate focus over the next three months is to try to shop ourselves to some labels and, and see what we can get as far as some type of management going um, to take a little, to, to maybe help steer the ship a little bit and, and keep us to our deadlines, um, uh, keep us a little more focused. Uh, not that we couldn't do it on our own, but we, we understand the strength of a team and uh, know that we are not the, the, we just need to make the music. We need to let other people kind of handle some of that stuff and advocate for us. And that's why we need fans to advocate for us because we can talk all day long about how great we think our shit is, but if people aren't talking about it, then it just doesn't make any sense. So, um, but you, you, you will hear a full length album out of Etch and Embers, uh, our official debut uh, in, in 2021. So yeah, we're, gonna, we're gonna start doing like, you know, we're gonna do a lot more of the streaming. We've talked about yeah. doing our own little concert and, uh, you know, playthroughs, stuff like that. So we really want to start getting in depth with our, our online fan base. And probably the end, especially. Yeah. And hopefully keep that, that aspect of it going. Not just not just as we move to the album release. I do want to build a steady flow of stuff like that, like what Tyler's talking about, um, where, you know, we're focusing on that additional bonus content in addition to the music because um, we're, it's not like we're cool people or anything, but we like to think we're cool and we want to, Hang out with you cool people. So well, right. Oh yeah. But like the, yeah, the that's, major... that's the basic plan for us is just to keep keep at it. You know, keep keep singles coming out. Um, you know, stay busy writing new music. Um, which I mean, like like Russ has said, we've got quite a few tunes that either are pretty much done or very close to being done. Um, so like I mean, yeah, we are Definitely got a lot of plans, and we just got to keep just keep it going, keep it flowing, keep the motivation. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's kind of really where we're st sitting at right now. And hopefully, the, the big the big guy, the big goal for us is definitely getting that full length album out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the and the major reason I asked that question was just because with everything that's gone on in twenty twenty, yeah, it's been a completely different year, and with the traction you began began to like really pick up this year. I wanted to make sure that, you know, you guys are still thinking about how you can continue to make that traction continue and really pick up over the course of the beginning of 2021. But as time goes on, and again, hopefully things start really beginning to get back to what they were going to be or supposed to be or what they were at the beginning of 2020 with ability to, you know, go play live shows, 
people going to a bunch of music festivals, people getting in mosh pits, that kind of stuff, just having a good old time back to what it was, you know, normal as they'll put it again, but just continue to know that, okay, there's pl- like, you have an idea for what you're going to do now and you have an idea what you're going to do when that happens to so continue to make sure you continue to pick up on the momentum that you've picked up with going forward on stuff with like sale of silence and all that stuff like that. However, if you guys didn't have that idea in there, it's like, okay, start thinking about that as well, because I don't want you to lose what you've already gained. I want you to keep building on it, keep growing to the point where, you know, you get to that level or all of a sudden you're, you're a regular on octane and all of a sudden you're going out and you're playing these nationwide shows every single year. That's what we want, Kevin. You have, you have the recipe for that. Can you send that over? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, um, it, it's, we, we want to get to playing shows. There is no doubt that, and, and it's not like, um, you know, we, we fully believe that people are going to just flock to shows when they can. We're seeing it in, in some of the markets that are having shows um, uh, even, and, and they're doing really random things uh, and people are going out. I mean, they're definitely packing these places when they're, where they're able. Um, but uh, the, the, the fan base can build so much more with that in your face live show than it can with a share a link. And it's so frustrating because it seems like there's a wall there with what you can do. I know, and I'm sure a lot of bands are feeling that the Facebook algorithm has changed a lot in October, November. Oh, what God, we, yeah. Oh, my gosh. What we used to be able to do, even with paid content, paid, paid advertisement, uh, we believe in it. We believe in putting some some value behind our, money, our, our songs and, and, and our content. Um, but results we were seeing midsummer. And I can't equate it to, to pandemic changes or anything, people being in their homes during the summer, because I think they're on Facebook just as damn much anyway, no matter what they're doing. While they're at the beach, they're on Facebook. It doesn't matter. Yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, but what the results we're seeing and, and the analytics from those types of things has been cut, uh, to, you know, by three quarters. It, it's just, it's insane. So you just kind of see a cap of what you can do. And that's why we love things like this, because there is an enormous circle of people that are at just avid music fans um as long as we can still gather in a facebook type of environment um it's it's beneficial to us but i do think that we're being really really squashed on those um on those fronts and some of those uh, platforms yeah <laughs> to god i mean we want to be in front of people because it's a lot easier to hand somebody a cd and say hey check this out or hand them a card with your links and talk um, to them and, and get their, get their have a like conversation of person to person experience rather than you know hey check out my band and you know via a message and it's or send them a link and it's just it's almost so much more you know uh cold and and just almost spammy at that point i mean you know we, what i mean we are we're all, all bands are guilty of spammy right <laughs> you know and so and that, that's the kind of thing it's like it, I think pe- people take a lot more away from a personal experience. Just like, just, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, like, that's a recurring thing with this whole deal. I mean, then, then, you know, personal conversation than it is, you know, trying to promote yourself, you know, online all the time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That personal conversation, that type of personal connection is definitely where you're going to draw a lot more value, especially as a fan due to the fact that if you guys just send me a link, it's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But if I'm not super duper invested already, the likelihood I'm going to click on that link is slimming up because I can just open and say, you know, man, maybe I listened to it, but you know, five minutes later, I'm going to be doing something completely different. But if right. it's just well, something where I'm talking to you personally, all of a sudden there's a bit more of an investment in there. And I've had plenty of conversations about this. It kind of goes back to streaming as well. Just kind of a similar conversation where people are, it's like, yeah, you know, streaming is, is fantastic for the fans, but people don't listen to the music nearly as much. Cause it's like after the first six seconds, they don't like the song. They can skip it. But back when the iTunes was a big thing, people were buying songs, they're buying CDs, vinyls, cassettes. It's you're making a you're making a monetary investment in buying that. So you wanted to listen to the whole thing just to make sure that you know you actually were getting your money's worth on it. And you listen to it a couple of times to really try and understand it. Now it's just not that way anymore. However, you have to continue to find a way to make you have that like genuine connection and make it people have that value in your music as well. So they're going to be listening to it a lot longer and have being able to build a genuine connection like that, talking to people face to face, or even though right now with the pandemic, you have to be online doing something like this, or if you're going to be messaging people, not just spamming them completely, but actually trying to have a legitimate conversation with them, you'd be surprised how far that really goes. I think the interaction that we've shown 
Um, and, and part of because we, we don't have to deal with, you know, 10,000 fans yet, you know, and, and that's a lot to navigate. And I feel for guys that, that really want to be in tune with or, or be friends to their fans and, 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 and know more about them. It's tough when you have a massive fan base. So I kind of enjoy, um, you know, we want to be huge, but I also do like the, the tweet team and, 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 and the only matter page, just, you know, having some conversations with them about things outside of music too. I'll tell you the biggest connection for me is, and, and we don't get it through here, but if a fan and I can do a shot of, uh, of liquor at the end of a show, I think we got a fan for life. You know, we can't do that through uh, an email or a, a right. share of a song. Right. So the, the biggest connection is that, like, like I said, that handshake or that shot at the end of a show or a, a hanging out and signing a, something that, you know, like you're going to be some big rock star. Um, you know, those things, that, those things mean something to people and we just can't do that. Um, it's hard, hell, it's hard to get people to, to jump in on merch giveaways, even. It's just, it's just so sterile. Um, you know, you, we want to give you something. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so hard to get well, people to get them in case, you know? It's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those deals, you know? I mean, I we've got, there's just so much input in, in, in you know, in our face at all times with our devices and yeah. all that stuff. It, it, so much stuff gets lost in the mix and you really like you said you really have to be personally invested and in, and in something to really see be able to seek it out to the sea of just you know overwhelming, yeah, yeah. overwhelming yeah. sea of just information and music and entertainment that's just you know i, I will say uh, connecting with the fans um and what, what you know i definitely want to bring it up if you're if you've not been on the Etched Embers music page, and we are Etched in Embers music online, um, etchedembers.net, um, or on Facebook, etchedembers.net on the web, um, go to the group Etched in Embers Igniters. Um, we did a live thing, or I did last week. Uh, we, we, we were kind of still on a quarantine thing. Uh, so I just popped off and did a little live stream listening session to the two newest uh, singles. And, you know, as an independent band, Nobody can yell at us for that shit. We yeah. can do that. If yeah. we want. Yes. You know what? Well, we're going to play the music that we want to play because um, we don't have nobody telling us we can't. So so we just previewed about 30 seconds. Wait, actually, about a minute and a half of, of a tune called Failure Mission. But if you go back and go to the Action Members Igniters, you go back through there and hear those unreleased tunes, a little peek of them too. So, so hop on there if you're listening. Well, if you are listening as well, I will give you this as well so that I always say this at the end, but I'll say this now. So whenever it comes to anything with Etched Embers, with especially with that Facebook group as well, with the Etched Embers Igniters, and where you can find them online, buy their merch, listen to their music, stream it, anything. Now, I know it seems what we were talking about with sending you links, but I'm going to make it easy on you guys because you because I know you guys don't want to like search this stuff up. You guys want to like a, click a link probably, especially after hearing this, like, okay, how can I join this up? Take a look at the podcast description. I'm going to have every single link for you there, everything labeled. When it comes to the Etch and Embers Ignite group, yes, you're going to want to join it. Yes, I am a part of that group as well. So you can see my big smiling face pop in every once in a while. I'll be like, hey, it's me kind of thing. But one thing I will say, though, is what you guys are talking about with that genuine connection with the fans, you guys are kind of talking right up my alley as well because there is always one thing I usually like to do with bands as well that I've had had on the podcast. Well, I haven't had a chance to do it yet because the fact that I've really started interviewing bands once the pandemic started. But like you were saying, Russ, one thing you love to do is just either be able to talk fans after a show, have a shot with them, and just have, make a fan for life with that. Well, there's one thing I always do here with bands I enjoy talking with, and I call it the first rounds on me policy. And it basically means that when I see you guys live, first rounds on me. I'm adding you to that list. Right on. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Proud to be a part of it. We <laughs> hope to be up your way. We really do. We uh, have yeah. one of the first tours we hope to hit after all this is going to start up your way, I believe. So that's that's kind yeah. of in the talks and and being being uh, discussed behind the scenes right now. It'd be just just a short run to try to maybe test out how um, things are returning and uh, um, and with a few bands that we believe in too, and, and hopefully some bands people heard heard of before. So. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe by the time we do that, everybody will have heard of us as well. So. Hopefully everyone has as well. And that's one thing I do want to talk about as well is also because with the different um, groups that the guy that helped create the Edge Embers Igniters group, Mr. Joe Alfano, that he's a part of. Also, shout out to Joe Alfano. You an awesome guy. Yeah. Had oh, yeah. And all your friends too, man. Oh, Joe, yeah. All, all, all Joe's awesome people that he's brought on to help us too. I mean, they, there's a lot of people that work with him um 
and and that have that have really taken to helping us and um, and a lot of other bands and it's it's a really cool network of people that just got uh, so shout out to all them you know they know who they are yes you know who you are but when it comes to like what I was gonna say is when it comes to that group as well that group is what I've seen from other groups that have been created with uh, Joe's uh, influence as well. They've done really well in terms of galvanizing fans in order to request that that the band songs get played on major radio stations, including Sirius XM Octane as well. And along with in the Igniters group and within the Sirius XM Octane fan club that Joe has as well. I have, again, we've talked about it. I have seen a number of those bands get requests on Octane a lot, and it has worked to get them in there. And they have been independent as well. Keem Collapse is probably a great example, which you guys kind of follow suit with that as well, with that kind of method. So, and I know you guys have been putting stuff out there to try and get Sailor Silence on Octane as well. So, I'll ask you this, because there is the will there, but... What do you want the fans to do, especially the Igniters page and everyone else that's going to be joining the Igniters page after this, to join in and get you guys on Octane? Please, please do. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to think of monetary packages to send out to those that do. I mean, I write I, stimulus I can, checks out here. Yeah, I mean, I'll come cook for dinner. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, okay, I'll cook for dinner. <laughs> a barbecue in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, I like. Uh, Russ, I like my steak medium rare, just so you know. There, there we you go. go. We can do that. <laughs> uh, can do that. Tweeting is obviously probably the biggest thing that people can do. Yeah. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of people that have moved on from Twitter and Snapchat and things like that. And I don't think the industry as a a gauging mechanism or anything like yeah, you know, not that Twitter's a, a true industry gauging mechanism, but I think it's just more the chance that we're going to get to the right people through there than through a Snapchat or Instagram. I guess Instagram's coming up in some yeah. ways there. Um, but, but really just, you know, incessant tagging of the DJs, um, you know, maybe just pop something in their mailbox so they know that you're close by. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> without like personal threats. I mean, yeah. I yeah. Know, maybe like send well, some we're all about that personal touch, you know, like we were saying, it goes back to that personal, you know, touch, you know. <laughs> we're gonna go old school, Kevin. We're gonna have we're gonna be putting some shit underneath our windshield. windshield. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, we're gonna we have, have people to... out there flipping the signs, <laughs> you know, doing the whole Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I, mean, I think if we get that going right now uh, outside of whatever's at one New York class, uh, yeah. how serious it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you guys stood out there with those signs and were flipping them around like the old like Quiznos guys were doing like 2007, yeah, exactly. I think you'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but but I but I I will say this as well because um in December I was doing an episode with the band Gold Frank since and Murray K GFM. It's three girls, they kind of created their own style. They call it yeah. beauty core. Basically, I kind of characterize it as take Paramore and the mixing of a day to remember and put them together, and that's what oh, you wow. get. So because of everything that Joe had done with all those other bands. I kind of wanted to start something with them as well and try and get them on Octane and just kind of figure out how that's been working over the past couple of weeks. And yeah, and I'll say this for everyone with the Etch Numbers and Yes, tagging the DJs on Twitter is a great way to go about it. Tagging the Octane page on Twitter is a great way to go about it. And when you like start right, when you start coming up with this stuff as well, you know, you don't have to just say, please play this. Like you can get really creative with it. You can like, you can just be like, you can tell, oh Lord, grant random, please grant us oh, the yeah. wish and play Sail the Silence by Etch Numbers. On your glorious time as DJ, thank you very much, sir. Hashtag yeah, the creativity on. helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, man. Sticking out from the crowd helps because I mean, you know, they get tons of just the boilerplate ones that just say, "Oh, Theo, please play this." You know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah cre- be creative send, with it. Yeah, send pictures of puppies to Katie and, and Cam, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and maybe dildos to Jose. And yeah, and- yeah. yeah. <laughs> and those well, guys. I mean, Grant's yeah. always talking about dildos, man. I mean, yeah. that's why I made that reference. He, he like when he was talking about Saul the other day, he's like, I didn't know, I can't remember, Sioux City, I was like the build capital of the country or something. <laughs> That's why I made that reference, everybody. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I just thought it was just for some reason just hilarious, but now I know there's a point behind it already. But base, and then also there's an email that you can guys can email as well, just a serious text and octane normally. Um, I will include that in the description as well because I was actually told about this email through uh, the GFM fan page because I try to get them going. I'm still posting on that one every single day, like, hey guys, don't forget, do this. And I'm just like, always been like, this has been your daily reminder. Dun, dun, dun. 
I'm thinking about creating like some weird wacky videos for it as well, along with when their podcast comes out. So we'll see how that all goes. By the time this one releases, that one will already be out. So hopefully by that time. And even on the bottom, like even when everyone's, um, if you're tweeting, put a, like everyone, include your, like us hashing like extra numbers on Octane so that you can, consi- so that people can consistently have that as a, basically as like a commonality always in there. So you can yeah. search up and like just search up hashtag edge numbers on Octane and we can see how many people are really going after this. So, yep. and it's a good, it's a good thing for us too, because that's a way that we can backtrack. We, you know, one of the biggest things with, uh, about bands is, you know, people that want interaction, they don't understand that a lot of this goes under the radar. You don't know, you know, as a band that who might be talking about you. And I've found a lot of, backstory or back uh, written things about sell the silence or shared from pages and and groups just by searching those and, and another thing using the hashtag sell the silence or etching embers things like that because it we can find that and we go back there and thank you you know and i occasionally set aside some time to do that uh to kind of search say hey all right we miss so on and so forth uh played us on their their online radio or on their station um, and we want to thank those people so by all means if we miss you we trust me we appreciate everything you do so for sure yeah, and also on the bottom of the video, if you're watching on YouTube, there will be something that says get ancient numbers on Octane and then have use hashtag ancient numbers on Octane so that we can all use the exact same hashtag. We'll make it easy so that, you know, when we look back on this, we can be like, okay, we're just going to look at that hashtag and we're going to see everyone that said it. And by the time, you know, a week after this, I'm hoping we get like, you know, like at least a thousand tweets going their way because then some, then it's going to be like, okay, we've got something. And then. These like the DJs like Grant and Katie is be like okay we we got to look at this you know you got if people people keep requesting this and it's got to be a thing where it's you don't want to spam them because if you spam them that gets really annoying if you stay creative with it it's like you know okay you do a once a day kind of thing you ask but if everyone's doing it and it's like okay then they're not spamming because everyone's asking for it yeah. everyone's like people are doing it once a day but everyone's creative with it if you have enough people doing that i mean it's going to be super hard to ignore it because all of a sudden they're going to see hashtag etch numbers on octane and they're going to see some weird like there once was a man from nantucket poems written in tweets about getting sale to silence on octane yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, start, we'll post a book of creative tweets yeah to, yeah, uh, yeah to include and there are some great people. I think it was, I don't know if it's one of the Any Given Sin uh, member, Any Given Center members or uh, one of the Saul members, but uh, he was incorporating lyrics to all their tweets yeah. and, and sharing them on the page. So they could kind of share a common deal, but he has some pretty good ones on there. So it, it was it, it was the Any Given Sin or Sinners one. I remember that one specifically because I Justin kept seeing Kramer, it like the past one couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a really good one. <laughs> I didn't see that. So it's like, so it's basically, it's when you can get creative and stand out in, amongst the crowd. And again, it kind of all wraps back into what you guys are doing in 2020 as well to make sure that you guys stood out amongst the crowd during this time when everyone was back at zero. When it comes to trying to get you guys on Octane with what the fans can do is, again, make sure that you find a way to stand out amongst the crowd. And I'll put it this way, stand out amongst the crowd in a positive light. You don't want to just be sending like the craziest stuff ever and all of a sudden having them look at your tweets and just be like, you know, oh my God, one of these again. You want to, if you can get them to laugh, then you're getting somewhere. That's why I think that what the yeah. Any Given Sin one, like those tweets were really working out well because it's something new and something refreshing and something different every day. So if you guys come up with, if your fans come up with something that's like completely different every single day on their own, just creative, can be lyrics, can be movie quotes, can be anything ridiculous as it might be. As long, If it gets them to laugh though, you got, you've got traction. Then you're starting to get in and then they're going to be checking it out. And all of a sudden you're making them laugh. Oh man, they're liking it. They're checking out. They're going to want to play it. And all of a sudden you guys are going to be requesting it more and more and more. And you're making them laugh more and more and more to the point where you guys get like what Uprise by Keem Collapse had, which is you're going to be like for two straight weeks, the most played song on Octane because people just keep requesting it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, I wish uh, that we could get people to understand how much just one minute of their time a day makes yeah. a difference. The it, fans it really, have all the power. I mean, they have so much power. They don't even realize it. I mean, just, that one stream, that one play, one tweet, I mean, it helps immensely. It, 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 could, it could be the one thing that helps break us over the edge, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really I really want people that are listening to this and watching this to really, uh, if they take away anything, take away that if you like a band, it doesn't have to be us, uh, but uh, I hope you like it. But uh, <laughs> if, you, if you like a band, you have all the power in the world to help them do take them as far as you want them to go yeah because 
that's 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 where it's all about what it's all about you know yeah and you've and we've seen it happen with so many bands as well where all of a sudden the fans get it's this is those bands are it's like oh my god why haven't they broken out yet and they have these fans are just like feverishly behind them and then all of a sudden one thing happens and because those fans are so fiercely behind them and are pushing it, all of a sudden more and more people get to notice them. And then they just start growing and growing and growing. And I think a great example of that would be Ice Nine Kills, where all of a sudden they had this feverish fan base, but not many people knew about them. All of a sudden they did the whole entire Silver Scream thing, which is a me- metalcore album just about horror movies. And all of a sudden their fans were pushing everywhere and the songs were fantastic. And people started listening to it even more so. And by the end of the year, they've got over a million listeners monthly on Spotify. Mm-hmm. So and from going up from like probably what was like a hundred thousand maybe yeah. before they released that album. You know, the, the the thing that we've learned here is that timing is is definitely been very critical uh, on on how the success of Sale of Silence approach or uh, unfolded. Uh, we were stoked. Uh, we we peaked out at number twenty four on the the Billboard indicator charts with it, um, and five on the Foundation charts for uh, main act or mainstream act of rock. Um, but two months earlier, you know, if we could have popped that off two months earlier, it could have been a whole different ball game. Never did we think we would have a single competing with uh, ACDC for yeah. t- airtime. Um, you know, and then yeah. boom, and then System of Downsides, they want to release yeah. stuff. And, yeah. Uh, Foo Fighters and, uh, and I mean, Deftones. Yeah, Deftones, Seven Dust. Seven Dust. Seven Dust. Seven Dust. Seven Dust. And the, the, the Burby awesome. the Horizon Thanks. thing as well is just. <laughs> It, it, sh- I'll put it this way: shit like that happens. It, it happens it all does. the time. It does. Yeah. yeah. So you'll have that. W- yeah, you will definitely have that. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, we thought we were going to get a little softer release because we we were thinking maybe mid September and we had some things we needed to get in order. Uh, and, and then we were told maybe that October fifth is when we sent it to radio uh, was the official release. It um, it wasn't so soft of a landing. I guess two weeks we got, and then then it was like bam, bam, flooded the flooded the uh, the airwaves, but. I will say that uh, the, the follow-up we have that that appears to be the the one that's going to be the direct follow-up to Sell Silence, um, it's a strong tune. Um, I think we may get more people digging on it than what we did with Sell Silence. Yeah, I'm excited about um, it. It's more up tempo. Um, we have a pretty not not really wide variety of what we have, but you know we're, we seem to be a little heavier edge, edge band live. Um, so I'm excited to get some of that stuff out to to the listeners. But uh, if you haven't Anybody that's heard Sell of Silence, if that's the one song you've heard from us, go back out and check uh, check the first few releases we did. Um, we got one that, that was the second release called Karma. That is, uh, it's, you know, it wasn't so publicized and promoted in the same way Sell of Silence was, but it's trick, trickling up there and it's our second most popular song on Spotify right now. Um, and we, we would fully believe the crown would be uh, because that's the one we probably feel is our strongest uh, so far. But but I think there's some good listening tunes there with a lot more to come. So I, I hope people hop on the bandwagon early and help build a band rather than um, maybe keep that band floating. That's going to float no matter whether that one person listens to them or not. So that's a good way to put it. And for everyone that's listening, um, when it comes to sale of silence as well, because I was listening to you, got, I was listening to sale of silence a good amount before this in terms of like, like a couple of weeks before this. And then right when we scheduled this interview as well, because I would like to go through a song and make sure I really understand one of your guys' songs so that if we do end up talking about it, I can really go in deep with it. But then before we even jumped on this, I had Spotify rolling and I was listening through. I started with Sale Sounds, of course. I'm like, okay, so I can remember the sound, even though I've listened to the song like 10, 15 times already. I just want to get that refresher in there, make sure, especially with all the music I listen to during the day anyway. I didn't want to miss out on anything. But then all of a sudden, you know, I'm still working on some stuff and it just keeps funneling through. I'm getting some more of your stuff as well. And when it comes to Sale of Silence, it definitely was, in my opinion, one of your more, probably the most, well, probably in, t- in, a, in a way, the lightest song you guys had, but it was like a hard rock melodic song. So yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah. this is definitely, there's definitely more here than what you would expect just if you listen to Sale of Silence. And if you listen to it, I think, especially for people who are trying to get into Action Embers, I think it's a great jump off point because I will talk about this. Because I have a whole write up on Etch and Embers. I'll give you guys my overall take on it to want to see what you guys think. And I wrote, end quote, overall, this song is a more hard rock melodic quality to it that brings you in right away with the more dense drumming, with a melodic intro. And knowing the theme of the song, the melodic intro and the chorus really gives us a feel of listening and understanding the message behind the song. But we need a little bit more after chorus two than what we had gotten. We do get that with the bridge that it amplifies all of that noise while maintaining a melodic feel. 
This is great as it really makes the final chorus stand out with all the power needed to make the song stand out in the minds of fans. This one is constructed fantastically to force you to listen to it all the way through. So you guys really did a great job to bring people in. And then by the time you get to like the end of the second chorus, it's like, okay, this is good, but we just need something more to keep us going. And you hit it right then and there. We always felt the structure of the song was, was good. One of the reasons we, uh, we, as a collective group, kind of decided on this, and especially with Chris's input, was that this song did flow and build properly. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a song of core. The, the core was there. Um, and, you know, I tend to stick to traditional writing standards uh, or, or, or formulas, um, but I don't always want to. You know, there's, there's times where I don't think we need a pre-chorus every time or, or a pre-chorus in every song or, right. you know, or I'd rather have a badass guitar solo than maybe a bridge, you know? So it, it, there's just those things. Um, fortunately, we, we still are at a point where we can just put out there whatever the hell we want to. Um, but, you know, we realize that we don't have all the, 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 per- the formulas for what's going to be great to the listener. Uh, but we do want to maintain some of that freedom, I think, um, with, uh, with our songwriting that we don't always have to sound like this. You know, we right. want to be able to do this too. Um, yeah. So, so that, that, that's one thing I hope we retain no matter what direction or who we end up with is a little bit of our individuality and freedom to, to kind of, uh, um, Keep I think you're going to hear some a little more diverse, yeah. you know, I, I really think as Tyler is writing, um, I think you're going to hear some more, some more badass guitar work coming up. Um, I write from a songwriter standpoint, um, got an acoustic guitar in my hand a lot of times or just kind of a singing a melody to a, 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 a vocal. I don't always build from the riffage. And I think Tyler is going to build more from the riffage. Um, and, and I think I'm excited about that uh, to, to get that kind of approach in some of the newest singles um, as we move along, whether they make that this album cut or the next one, because I, I do hope that we have a follow-up that we can knock out pretty We're not going to be a tool. Um, yeah. Like that. Uh, we're trying to, Kick out main jam yeah. as we can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say don't be don't be like too aware you're gonna wait 13 years before you release an album, but also don't try and like force an album out too quickly. Just make sure That's that when true, you're writing true. those songs, yeah. that they build naturally on top of themselves. And you're not trying to force something in there. Yeah, that doesn't belong in there. Like there's a lot of bands I'll put it this way that blend different genres very well but again the biggest thing is they all feel naturally when you try and force all these different things in there and they just don't flow naturally yeah you're gonna get something that might be a complete mess and we have seen well, bands yeah, do yeah. that so where i'm going with that is like because right now you guys are an independent band you have that autonomy to do whatever the hell you want produce things however the hell you want and ha- release them whenever you feel like and whenever you feel like they're ready when you do get signed if you potentially get signed to a label get a manager and all that kind of stuff there might be some pressure there, but if you can get a deal where you can make sure that you have the most autonomy possible in terms of creative liberties, in terms of when you release stuff, in terms of deadlines, all that kind of stuff, make sure you get that because that's when, say you're going to be working on something and you think it's going to be ready to release, but then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I got a different idea that might make this song work even better. Yeah. And you, and then you have the time to workshop it instead of trying to quickly rush it together. It's it's a uh, I you know I think that I could probably work on the same song for my whole life because it's <laughs> yeah. so hard to commit something to uh, to finality. Um, you always I can think of well I mean even Crown was written uh, last year uh, May of last year I think and we kind of we we played it a certain way for a while and I was like I got this idea. And we, we had this kind of kick-ass soul section, bridge section in the middle. Mike Tyson's K.O. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Inside joke Super on the, on the uh, we, had, we had a little guitar riff that reminded some uh, of a, some old Nintendo stuff. So. <laughs> but uh, but it, it really is. Um, and I, I could probably write a couple-hour song that's over the course of a couple years. And But but it is hard to commit to that finality. And there are so many voices as to what works, what doesn't work. Um you really invest in something and you really believe in it. And then it's hard to kind of step back and realize that, you know what, this could be a little bit better, but it's, that's part of growing as an artist and understanding that, that uh, some people know better than you do. And some people know what works better than you do um, or what your sound, uh, where you fit better, I guess. Um, but I do think that we, we have a pretty cohesive sound. We're kind of raw. Um, we sell the silence was the first track that we had programming in. It was a little outside of just a straight up rock and roll four piece band. Um, 
and then you still get that in the live show. It's just kind of straight up because currently we're not doing backing tracks or anything. We're, we're playing these songs all. Um, we, we try to mimic everything you hear, although they, they pretty much sound the same. Um, but uh, so that's something that we are learning that that we can can take these things to the next level. Than, uh, than just maybe what we work out here in this basement or at, you know at our studio in Springfield uh, and wherever we end up but uh, we but we definitely don't want to give it all up and just have a big wig saying no you know what well, three songs by next Saturday we don't care if they're Miley Cyrus or which hey we can have success Miley Cyrus play some Miley Cyrus yeah. I'm sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> early on it's funny because Adam's like I'll sell out a heartbeat <laughs> 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 You tell me what to play. <laughs> it's got the right mentality, Kevin. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I was going to say, well, if you're going to sell out right away, then um, just play sell up by Real Big Fish. Add some horns in there and just have a great time yeah, with it. There we go. I'm a fan. I'm we'll a fan. We'll just There you go. Is it just, just go all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's got capella, there it is, there it is. <laughs> but one of the two good uh, things come out of this, man. Yeah, it's got uh, booze lock. And, yeah, and booze, got... booze lock and Scott Capella, baby. <laughs> I've got a feeling if like God, brainstorming. I wish I, would, I wish I would have thought of Scott Capella like nine, eight years ago because my brother was in college at the time and him and his friends loved sky music. I'm like, you guys could have started a Scott Capella group. Yeah. <laughs> Best part about it is my brother's name is Scott, so it would just fit perfectly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Scott and the Scott Capellas. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm showing this to him on Christmas. <laughs> but I, one thing is kind of like wrapping this all up with Russ. Is I know you were talking about with when it comes to writing song, like you're like you could work on the same song over and over again, and it could always try and think, oh, it could be better, it could be better. But you got a guy to your left, you got a guy to your right, and you got a guy somewhere else tonight that always is right. going to be behind your live shows. That will also be able to listen to this as well and just say, you know, listen to the song. It's like, okay, then it's, you might think, oh, this might work out here. This might work out here. This might work better. But you got these other guys like, no, 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 no. Trust us. It's ready. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's been a cool process in itself too. Cause yeah. I mean, you know, Russ has, um, brought a lot of these songs to us as a group and, um, a lot of them have definitely evolved from what they were when he brought it to us. And we've all had our hand in changing them and altering them. And the cool thing about it is it's such a natural process when it happens. It's just, it's, been real cohesive. it's super cohesive and we can just, we can sit there and we're all, we're all in a room and Tony, he'll be like, you know, I think this, this should be slightly changed to this. And we're like, Oh yeah, we hear it. And then, boom, it just comes to fruition. It's a really natural, organic type of writing process that's been happening between us four uh, with this. And it's been it's been really exciting uh, to be a part of that. It's been um, a lot of fun. Yeah, so it makes it a lot, a lot of fun. Exactly. Um, and so... Um, Everybody so. has elevated every portion of what they do. Um, it, it's... I, I've always, and I've said it when I've talked to guys, I'm like, look... Um, I, I don't don't take any claim to the greatness of any one part or anything like that. Everybody I've worked with, and even pre, prior to this band, for the most part, they've always handled and come back with something better. Um, and I'm an open minded person. I, I, I try to be. And, and I mean, I think maybe everybody feels they are at some point, but, but I truly am. And, and I really like alternative perspectives to things that I think. And, and some of these songs I've spent a lot of time with where um i i feel a change is needed but i can't quite get it by myself you know and and um that's part of having a, a group of guys that you believe in and believe in their talents i mean there is no shortness of talent in this band at all um stellar musicians all around um everybody sprinkles their magic shit on their on their parts and and the whole song magic itself <laughs> I don't, I don't, they, they don't personally shit on the song but uh <laughs> But, they, they, but what they do <laughs> is uh, is incredible. And I will say one thing about the writing process, though. We tend to, like, have things in our mind, and then, like, two days before the studio, we, like, change shit up. That, and <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, hey, well, let's just do stuff. this. Oh, we definitely let's have done do that. This. Let's just go ahead and change this up here. And, uh, and it's worked every damn time. 
It really has. It's gone so well. Far. It's been a nail biter a couple times, <laughs> but it's but it's always worked out for the better. I oh, we feel that. it has. I mean, there might be some instances now you you ruined that part or whatever. No bullshit. We did. It worked out. So, so you, we're not going to leave any different. Then you guys might want to keep that writing style if it's worked out every single time. You, I mean, it's it's. I'll put it this way: it's a unique writing style. It's something that not many nobody else is going to have. But why fix if it ain't broken? Yeah, yeah. It, we like we like keeping things exciting. I guess <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. And as we are closing this podcast out, I always like to give you guys the last chance to basically say your. Well, closing remarks, kind of like a weird debate kind of thing. Like, what are your closing remarks? But I always like to give you guys the floor to say whatever the heck you want. Go and plug whatever the heck you want. So, guys, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, guys. Uh, you know, this this last year has kind of been obviously pretty shitty. But, you know, we got a lot of plans for this next 2021. Like we talked about earlier, we're going to be doing the streaming a lot more and try to connect with you guys online as, as much as we can. And, uh, you know, until venues kind of get back to opening so you can – you can be looking out for us on that and, and our next releases that we're going to have. And hopefully you will be hearing those on the airwaves soon. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we get back to playing some live shows for you. And we want to come back to you. Oh, yeah. Come back, talk to you. Again. Yeah. I'd love to come back on the air. Thanks for having us, uh, for sure. And uh, to all our fans out there, we appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us. It's been awesome. Keep, keep hammering on it. We, you know, we, we appreciate everything you guys are doing and hopefully, um, here soon we'll start to be seeing some real, real, um, reaping the rewards from that uh, fully. But uh, you guys have been killing it so far. Shout out to our tweet team uh, with Abe and uh, Lisa, Michelle, all them. You guys are killing it out there as always. And um, yeah, just keep just keep hammering it and keep supporting us, man. And we're going to keep providing some good music for you guys. And hopefully we'll be seeing you guys live and in person here in the near future. Hopefully. It sounds just- good. I'm sorry, I was, I was having a moment here because it's like when Tyler and him were talking and you were you were kind of moving your head with your mouth is fine. I was like having I was like it's envisioning you were saying this. Like, it, was, <laughs> it was weird, man. I was like zoned in. I was like, man, it's like it's oh, that's it's, funny. It's, I didn't I did not smoke any weed. Yeah, right, right. No 420 up in here right All now. Right. <laughs> All right. Well then I will close with this. So everybody that is listening, listen up. So again, when it comes to finding anything in regards to etch and embers, just take a look at the description of the podcast, all their music, all their social media links, joining the etch embers ignite page. Yes. You're going to want to be on that fan page. I will have the link in there for you guys as well. So just click on it, ask to join and someone's going to respond with yes, you are now a member. So don't worry about that. It usually happens within like the first like 10 seconds. So you'll be It does good. not cost anything either. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't cost anything free, either. Free. It's free. And when it comes down to, will I have Etch Numbers in the podcast again? Well, I certainly hope so. I'd love to have them back on in 2021. Even l- later in 2021. Doesn't matter when. As long as I get them back on the podcast. As long as I get you guys back on the podcast, I am A-OK with that. All right, All right, man. Man. And you guys are also, again, officially members of the First Rounds on Me Club. So the first time I get to see you guys live, because I do plan on seeing you guys live at some point, whether it's my, in my neck of the woods up here in Milwaukee, either in your neck of the woods over in Missouri or somewhere even anywhere else. Like, hey, if it's Chicago, I'm I'm there. It's an hour and a half drive for me. Who gives a crap? There I'll be go. there as well. And I'll be like, hey, guys, so uh, what you drinking? And then all of a sudden have five shot glasses lined up and we'll be good to go. And please tell her, don't fight a bar stool. That would not necessarily be the best idea. Yeah. Unless oh, no. we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're in a brewer's jersey. We'll put water in hands. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're what? We're in a brewer's <laughs> Oh, come on. Then you're going to be fighting me. <laughs> but... Yes. He, oh, he doesn't have a St. Louis cap on. He, he, he okay, have okay. Uh, yeah. on uh, it, it's it's okay. We'll put a Cubs jersey on and we'll fight it together. We'll have a good time. Uh, there you go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Alrighty. So as I close this out, I will not be saying goodbye to you guys on this because that I always feel like that insinuates like, okay, that's it. It's over. No big nothing else outside of that. But again, I want to have you guys back on the podcast again sometime later in 2021. And I've already got plans to see you guys live and buy you guys the first round because you're in the first rounds on me club so i can't say goodbye in all a good conscience so i have see to soon. end it with we'll see, see you, you later yeah. see you later man see you later Thanks, guys whoa, whoa folks that was my interview with etched in embers coming out of central missouri please listen to their latest single sail the sounds and help us get it featured on sirius x and octane by tweeting all the djs tweeting at sirius x and octane 
um, emailing them in the email provided in the description of the podcast and request that it be put on Octane with the hashtag Ashen Embers on Octane. You'll see it in the bottom of the video if you guys forget. So please help us push that because we want to get these guys on there. And then when the new thing comes out, we'll do the exact same thing all over again because let's help these guys grow, shall we? Please, please, please join the Ashen Embers Igniters Facebook group. Again, it is in the description and I can't wait to have these guys back in the podcast, nor can I wait to have them play live once again. And I get to see them for the first time and they get to take part in the first rounds on me club because well, that's a fun club to be a part of. And I want to thank you guys for listening once again to the podcast, watching it again. I hope you're having a good start to 2021 and that's going to be for me today, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to the Cold Progression Podcast brought to you by MSOGD Rocks where rock and metal thrive. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one of these episodes of Big, Healthy, and Hearty. See ya! Yeah!